Without further ado, let's start the webinar. For this session, we have Louis Wong, Director of Philip Securities, Hong Kong, covering the Hong Kong and China stock market outlook and his top stock picks for the first quarter of 2023. Let's welcome Louis. Louis, take it away. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, Happy New Year. Nice to uh, see you here. Uh, may I wish every one of you happy, healthy, and wealthy uh, in 2023. So uh, let's go through some of the key discussion points uh, today. Uh, before I uh, talk about the uh, key discussion points, uh, let me remind you if you have any questions about uh, Hong Kong stocks, uh, you may please feel free to uh, leave your question in the chat room. Okay. Uh, let's, okay. Now, uh, these are the key discussion points today. Uh, we'll do a review of China and Hong Kong stock market and also uh, overview of China's economy and 2023 outlook. Uh, then I will also share with you our uh, view on the Chinese Yuan outlook and the first quarter uh, index targets. Our ETF pick this time round and also uh, the, our uh, call on the, uh, the stocks uh, that are the underlying for DLC issue in Singapore. Those will include uh, the ATM, uh, X, uh, uh, all, uh, the tech stocks, as well as uh, BYD, Geely, um, and uh, Galaxy Entertainment, and uh, Wuxi Biologics. I think these are the uh, uh, very popular stocks, Hong Kong stocks. Okay, uh, so wrap up to 022, uh, Asia and Hong Kong market are, were both down. Shanghai Composite index was down 15.1 percent in the in 2022 uh, but thanks so to the rally in the fourth quarter uh, it has narrowed the loss uh, pair uh, the loss uh, in the final quarter of 2022 uh, the Sunshan component composite index was down more uh, down by 25.9 percent in 2022 uh, Hong Kong uh, you can see from this chart that uh, the rally uh, that started uh, in early November was quite strong. Uh, so uh, up to now, uh, the Hang Seng Index was up nearly 7,000 points from the low seen in uh, end of October from 14,597. Now the Hang Seng Index is trading above 21,000. Yet, uh, for the whole of 2022, Hang Seng Index was still down 15.5%. Hang Seng Tech Index was down uh, more than 40% at the point uh, near uh, the end of uh, October uh, when the index dropped to, oh, sorry, the chart should be, uh, I, I make a mistake with this chart. It should be, I can show you the other one, let me see. Yeah, this is the uh, correct chart for the Hang Seng Tech Index. Uh, it dropped to as low as 2,720 uh, in late October last year, uh, but now it has recouped, uh, rebounded uh, nearly 1,500 points to uh, 4,500 something, okay? Uh, but for the whole year, the Hang Seng Tech Index was down 27.2%. Uh, it was down more than 40% at the point. So last year was not too good. Lah. I mean, for Asia market and Hong Kong market, both were down uh, quite substantially. Okay, um, let's look at the China's, let's look at China's economy. Uh, China's economy grew by 3.9% in the third quarter compared with a year earlier. It is the fastest growth uh, 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 in, uh, among the three quarters last year. Uh, first quarter last year, the China's GDP grew 2.5%. Second quarter, because of the, out, uh, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic outbreak, 
uh, that happened in May last year. So uh, the GDP growth slowed down to 0.4% in the third quarter. Yet uh, there was a, a rather strong rebound in the third quarter. Uh, the GDP grew by 3.9%. Uh, uh, we projected that for the 2022, uh, China's economy will grow by about 3.5% to around up to at most 4%. But interestingly, leader Xi Jinping uh, recently estimated that China's 2022 GDP will grow at least 4.4%. So to achieve this 4.4% uh growth target, uh, which means the fourth quarter GDP growth has to be uh, up uh, to nearly 5%. Otherwise, it will not be able to meet uh, to achieve this 4.4% growth target. Uh, how China will achieve that uh, will remain to, 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 to be seen. Uh, and uh, the uh, target uh, uh, estimated by Xi Jinping is uh, also much higher than the uh, consensus uh, uh, expected growth rate. That's between 2.7% to 3.3%. Okay, uh, But even if China uh, is able to achieve 4.4% GDP growth last year, it will still be below the annual growth target of around 5.5%. Okay. Uh, Chinese policy makers have vowed to seek a turnaround in 2023 uh, to be backed by the end of zero COVID and a series of property support measures that will revive domestic consumption and bolster growth. So 2023, uh, we are, uh, the outlook is more promising uh, with the end of the zero COVID policy. Uh, and uh, uh, I think uh, investors are expect faster uh, economic growth uh, this year. Uh, but of course, uh, in the short term, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the substantial increase in COVID infections triggered by the uh, abrupt easing of pandemic restrictions uh, announced in early December last year uh, will cloud the short-term outlook. So short-term outlook is still uh, uncertain because of the uh, the the uh, rise in uh, COVID infections. Okay, um, let's take a quick look at the uh, some of the economic data. Uh, real estate investment actually uh, worsens despite uh, that uh, policies have been rolled out to support. And actually, now the policy focus mainly on uh, helping property developers to uh, solve their debt uh, problems rather than, uh, I mean, this is the first uh, target they are going to achieve uh, to help them raise money through bank loans, uh, through uh, issuing debts or issuing equities uh, to, uh, to repay the debts. So this is the uh, priority, uh, the, the uh, 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 major goal. Huh? Uh, and uh, subsequently, we'll see the more supportive uh, policies to encourage uh, property purchase, okay, such as uh, 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 lowering the uh, requirement for uh, the down payment as well as uh, mortgage interest rates. So these are in the pipeline. Um, fixed asset investment. Uh, grew 5.3% in the first 11 months of 2022, uh, sustained mainly by infrastructure and manufacturing investment. If not uh, because of infrastructure and manufacturing investment, uh, fixed asset investment growth would be much lower. Because you can see on the right-hand side uh, that real estate investment continues to uh, decline. Uh, it dropped 9.8% in the first 11 months, tracked down by a 26.6% drop in total home and commercial building sales. Okay, uh, the chart on the left-hand side shows property sales in terms of uh, uh, value as well as in terms of gross floor area. 
the uh, yellow line represents the gross floor area sold, and the blue line represents the uh, uh, the uh, transaction value. So both uh, were down more than twenty percent year on year uh, in the first eleven months uh, last year. Uh, for the whole year 2022, property sales are expected to uh, slump around 25%. And new home prices are also expected to fall, uh, which may not be a bad thing because uh, uh, the Chinese government uh, uh, has wanted to uh, cool down the overheating property market. So new home prices saw a moderate fall of 1.4%. Uh, in 2022. Uh, we expect the pace of declines to ease to 8% in 2023 because uh, those uh, supportive policies will not will take time uh, to, uh, to, to see the effect. It will not, uh, we will not see instant effect on the property sales. So uh, we still expect this year uh, property sales will continue to uh, decline, but the pace of decline is, ex is expected to ease to 8% uh, thanks to state support measures and the lifting of the government's strict anti-COVID policies. Okay. Um, as for industrial production, uh, it was hit by disruptions sparked by the surging COVID infections. Industrial production rose 2.2%, uh, the lowest growth rate uh, in the second half of uh, 2022, uh, slowing from the 5% rise in October. So you can see a rather drastic slowdown in industrial, in the, in industrial production uh, growth uh, uh, affected by uh, the COVID. Industrial production in November was also hit by instances of civil unrest. You may uh, uh, read from the news that uh, in some made some uh, uh, hubs in China, workers pro protested uh, in the factories uh, against draconian anti-COVID measures uh, that uh, aim to isolate them. Uh, that they do, they they uh, uh, restrict them to leave the factory. So the uh, civil unrest uh, uh, that happened in November last year uh, also hit industrial production. Okay, uh, retail sales uh, was doing quite uh, was faring quite badly. Uh, it saw the biggest monthly fall in six months. Uh, fell five point nine percent in November the biggest monthly fall in six months. The decline in retail sales brought the year-to-date total down by 0.1% from the first 11 months of last year. So uh, the, the first 11 months retail sales in China turned negative. Uh, there, there was a, a rather uh, bad sign uh, because of uh, COVID, because of slowdown of the, uh, the economy. Uh, but one saving grace is inflation in China remains moderate as compared to uh, high inflation in other countries such as US and, the, and Europe. Uh, China's CPI rose 1.6% in November uh, from a year earlier, easing from a 2.1% rise in October. In month-on-month -month term, China's CPI actually declined 0.2% uh, in November compared with a gain of 0.1% in October. Uh, as for the PPI, the producer price index, it fell 1.3% in November uh, after declining by the same magnitude in October. Uh, so both uh, consumer inflation and producer inflation in China remain subdued. Uh, both uh, CPI and PPI uh, 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 namely CPI is uh, uh, much lower than the official target of around 3%, okay? So this lowering inflation will uh, leave more room for more fiscal and monetary stimulus policy maneuver uh, from the government, okay? Um, the 
purchasing manager index uh, still paint a gloomy picture, yet we saw uh, some silver lining. Uh, uh, the Thai manufacturing PMI and the government uh, official manufacturing PMI were both uh, below 50, uh, uh, which means they are in a contraction mode. Uh, the uh, Thai Sin manufacturing PMI shrank for a fifth straight month in December, uh, which is largely in line with uh, government data. But uh, the silver lining is the services PMI, Thai Sin services PMI, uh, rose in December, rose to 48 in December from 46.7 in November. And some service companies reported that business had improved. Uh, since November. Uh, and the other uh, uh, point to take note is, another silver lining is uh, the business confidence index rose to a 17 months high as firms are positioning for an in eventual economic recovery after the country began easing COVID-19 restrictions in December. So, uh, the the uh, sentiment or the confidence is uh, improving. Uh, the companies are getting uh, more confident about uh, the next uh, the, the near the next twelve months because of uh, uh, the uh, ending of the zero COVID policy. Okay, uh, two two three outlook. This is our uh, two two three uh, outlook for China. Uh, we view that China's economic growth profile this year will be characterized by a weaker first six months and a stronger second half. Qian Di Hou Gao, the weaker first six months and a stronger second half. Uh, COVID infection risks will likely intensify during Lunar New Year holiday. That is this month, later this month, uh, as uh, uh, the uh, New Year holiday period is a key truffle period uh, for the nation of 1.4 billion people. So it's worried that uh, those infected uh, uh, patients, uh, when they travel to the uh, ru uh, to the uh, rural, uh, to, to to back to the uh, uh, the home village, may bring uh, the uh, COVID uh, uh, to to the uh, rural areas. Uh, so uh, uh, infection risks will likely intensify uh, in late January and early February. Uh, but after a difficult first quarter, we expect China's economic momentum uh, to uh, start to build in the second quarter. And then we expect a strong recovery to set in during the second half of the year, when the public health situation will be manageable. Of course, this is a prerequisite uh, that uh, the infection cases will peak in the first half, and then uh, the, it, will, uh, it will come under control in the second half. Uh, then a surge of pent up demand being unleashed in response to the zero COVID exit will lead to a consumption rebound in 2023. We also expect global demand for Chinese exports to recover in the second half of 2023, as US Fed rate hike is almost done. Uh, uh, okay. Um, the Chinese government will also be expected to announce more expansionary fiscal measures to stimulate the economy and more supportive policies that will uh, benefit the property sector. Okay, for 2023, we expect uh, China's economy to grow between 4.8% uh, to 5%. That will be much higher than the, uh, if you take uh, Leader Xi Jinping's estimate, 4.4%, uh, uh, 2022. So this year, we're expecting higher uh, economic growth uh, for China. Okay. Uh, as for the yuan, uh, the Chinese yuan has been on an appreciation trend in the past few months, with the onshore yuan strengthening from a low of 7.328 uh, per US dollar in November, now 
uh, it has appreciated to uh, 6.85, a gain of more than 4,500 basis points. Um, <clears throat> another uh, positive development for the Yuan will be uh, the extension of trading hours announced by the uh, people, P PBOC, the people, uh, People's Bank of China, and the State Administration of Foreign Exchange, uh, abbreviated SAFE, they had an extended the trading hours of the interbank foreign exchange market to 3 a.m. the next day. So longer trading hour and also covering uh, more trading hours in uh, different time zones in Asia, Europe, Europe and uh, North America. Uh, also uh, positive to supportive to the Yuan will be recent policy support measures uh, and the reopening uh, is, uh, is expected to bolster an economic recovery in China in 2023. Uh, while in contrast, US and Europe may uh, face recessions. So this uh, divergence will, uh, will uh, help Yuan, uh, will lend support to uh, the Chinese Yuan. Uh, also, the end of Fed's interest rate hike uh, cycle, coupled with slowing economic growth in the US, will restrict the dollar's attractiveness. So uh, we expect uh, there is more room uh, to appreciate, uh, the Yuan has more room to appreciate against the dollars in, U, uh, in 2023. Uh, you can see from this chart, uh, the sharp appreciation that, uh, that started uh, in early November. Uh, so the uh, spot, uh, the, the, the Chinese yuan uh, exchange rate has appreciated from about uh, around 7.35 to uh, 6.8, okay? So we expect uh, more room uh, for appreciation. Uh, the, the forecast range for the yuan uh, will be this year will be between 6.64 to 7, okay? So uh, barring unforeseen uh, circumstances, we don't uh, expect the yuan to uh, weaken be, uh, above 7 uh, to 1 US dollar. And uh, it may continue to appreciate uh, uh, and test the resistance of 6.64. Okay, um, our forecast index uh, range for uh, Shanghai Composite Index in the first quarter is 3030, 3030 points to 3295, uh, less than 300 points uh, range. So uh, it will not be very volatile. Still uh, in, on uh, the short term outlook is uh, rather uncertain because of the uh, reopening that uh, uh, trigger uh, a rise in uh, infected cases. So investors will remain cautious in the near term. Uh, but once uh, the situation comes under control, we expect uh, better uh, performance in the second quarter. So for Asia market, we are still, we remain cautious in the uh, short term. Uh, uh, that's also reflected in our uh, forecast index range. For the Sunshine Com uh, Composite Index, our forecast range uh, for first quarter is 10,800 uh, to 12,600, okay? Um, Hang Seng uh, now is trading at 21,000, uh, above 21,000. So we think uh, uh, the uh, upside in the first quarter will be uh, not much after the uh, strong rally that started in uh, November last year. So we expect resistance around 22,900 to 23,000. And support is expected uh, at 18,800. Uh, the tech index, our forecast range is 4,000 to 5,100. 
because recently um, there are more positive developments uh, that favor tech stocks, uh, also a revaluation. Uh, for instance, lately you can see that Alibaba, uh, which uh, had uh, underperformed the market for some time, now is catching up because of uh, uh, positive news on the, on the internet uh, or the platform company sector. Uh, our forecast range for the Hang Seng Tech Index in the first quarter is between 4,000 points and 5,100 points. So now at uh, around 4,500, that means there's still another, uh, around 10% uh, upside uh, expected uh, in the first quarter. Okay, our ETF pick is uh, quite a distinctive ET ETF launched by uh, Philip Capital Management that was listed in November last year. It is known as Philip Hong Kong Newly Listed Equities Index ETF. The stock code uh, is 2835. It's the first ETF that focused on Hong Kong IPO market and also uh, for the time being, the only ETF that uh, invests in Hong Kong IPO uh, IPOs, okay? Uh, or newly listed, uh, newly listed uh, companies. Okay, uh, it's uh, it's at, it adopts a full replication strategy of the selective Hong Kong newly listed equities index. So it's a passively managed ETF replicating the selective Hong Kong newly listed equities index. And this index is actually uh, jointly designed. Uh, and uh, developed by Solective and Philip Capital Management Hong Kong uh, to uh, represent uh, the IPO, Hong Kong IPO market. Okay, uh, there will be rebalance, quarterly rebalancing, uh, but one thing uh, unique about this uh, index guideline is uh, on top of the quarterly rebalancing, there will be a monthly review to uh, so that newly listed companies will be added to the index uh, under the so-called fast entry mechanism or the fast track, uh, uh, like when you uh, uh, fly, if you uh, uh, fly business class or you are a gold member, or a silver member of an airline company, you, you can uh, use the fast track. So there's this fast entry mechanism. Uh, every month we'll add uh, new uh, candidates uh, that are newly listed to the index. Um, to contain risk, the index constituents, uh, the weighting will be kept at 10% uh, for individual stocks. Uh, during rebalancing. And uh, as most of the newly listed companies are so-called new economy stocks, so uh, backtrack uh, data shows that this index, this uh, selective Hong Kong newly listed equities index uh, did outperform the Hang Seng Index and uh, the Hang Seng Tech Index. Uh, this is the index design. Uh, the universe uh, includes, comprise all the common stock listed in the Hong Kong uh, Stock Exchange. Uh, all constituents will be listed no longer than 756 trading days. That's uh, about three years. That means uh, companies that are listed, uh, newly listed, will stay in the uh, index for up to three years. And then uh, after three years, no matter uh, uh, big or small, I huh, uh, mean, in terms of market cap, they uh, uh, cannot stay. Uh, the, the index will add more newcomers and remove uh, companies that have been listed for three years. The design is to make sure that the index uh, always uh, 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 represent the newly or the lately listed companies, okay? Uh, there is a requirement on the market capitalization 
So uh, the minimum uh, market cap, share class market cap is 1 billion. Uh, the threshold is 1 billion Hong Kong dollar. Uh, and the, there's also a minimum a requirement, a minimum requirement of free float market cap uh, 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 that is 25%, okay? 25% free flow market cap. Uh, there's also liquidity requirement. So the minimum uh, average uh, daily value traded over one month trading period is 10 million Hong Kong dollar uh, worth of uh, shares being traded. Okay, to make sure that uh, the constituents are, uh, I mean, uh, 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 liquid enough for uh, uh, buying and selling. Okay, uh, and then it will be sorted by free float market capitalization. This is uh, 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 the index design. Okay, just now I mentioned the IPO fast track. So uh, there will be a monthly uh, review day uh, where securities that had reason that a recent IPO can enter the index. Okay, uh, uh, the maximum number of the index of the constituents will be uh, fifty. There will be up to fifty constituent stocks, and uh, they will be ranked in free flow market capitalization, uh, respective to the existing index components. Okay. Um, so uh, just to let you have an idea of uh, the constituent stocks, these are the top 10 holdings, which uh, include Alibaba, JD.com, Baidu, NetEase, uh, the internet uh, companies and the platform companies. Uh, yet it also includes Yum China, uh, unlike the Hang, the, uh, Hang Seng Tech Index. Uh, uh, Yum China is also one of the constituents uh, and Kwai Shou Technology, Trip.com, uh, uh, car makers, Neo and Lee Auto, they are also uh, among the top 10 holdings. And uh, uh, ZTO Express, uh, 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 a logistic company, uh, Courier. Uh, uh, so if you wish to view the full holding details, you can go to uh, the link I show here. Uh, to our website, uh, uh, Philip Hong Kong, Philip Management uh, Hong Kong's website, and you can uh, view the full holding details. Okay, um, so uh, compared to the Hang Seng Tech Index, which have only 30 uh, constituent stocks, this index, this Hong Kong newly listed equities index, uh, have 50, comprised 50 stocks. So it uh, it will uh, have better diversification with different sectors. Uh, the uh, slides uh, here shows that uh, media and entertainments account for about 27% of the, of the ETF. Uh, retailing accounting for 22.5%. Automobile and components, uh, 15% and consumer services, 12.6%, uh, okay? So it's more diversified. And then uh, there are more non-tech new economy companies uh, in the index. For instance, uh, just now Yum China I mentioned, it belongs to the uh, less leisure facilities and services sector. It uh, accounts for 5.4% of the index. And then, uh, Zhong Tong Kuai Di, ZTO Express. It belongs to uh, the transportation, the logistic industry. Uh, it counts for 3.4%. And another uh, constituent is a well-known name, Long Fu San Quan, uh, uh, Long Fu Spring, um, 9633. Okay, it accounts for 2.9% of the uh, of the total weighting. Uh, uh, among the constituent stock, there's also this non-tech new economy companies called Hua Zhu Jiu Dian, budget hotel uh, chain uh, uh, in China, very big one, uh, 1179, and 
New Oriental. Wow, this is the uh, outperformer last year because of uh, uh, transform transformation, transforming from edu online education to uh, live broadcast selling uh, merchandise, 9901, okay? Uh, this chart shows the relative performance of uh, the uh, new Hong Kong newly listed equities uh, index versus the Hang Seng index. The blue line represents the uh, the, uh, the the selective uh, index. Okay, so it outperformed the uh, Hang. Clearly, you can uh, clearly see that it has outperformed the Hang Seng index by a very uh, big margin uh, over the last uh, two, three years. Okay, uh, as I mentioned, our uh, Philip Hong Kong newly listed equities index ETF 2835 was listed uh, on the 21st of November last year. So since listing, it was up more than 20%. Uh, uh, it was listed, the listing price was $10. Uh, despite briefly dro dropping to uh, $9.35, it uh, was on an uptrend, consistent uptrend uh, since uh, early November. Uh, yes, it was up more than 20% since list listing, okay? Uh, these are some of the quick facts of uh, this ETF. Uh, the trading board lot size is 100 shares. So at $12, uh, the uh, uh, entry uh, price is only, and uh, the value is only 1,200 Hong Kong dollars. That is uh, less than uh, 300 Sing dollar. Manager is Philip Capital Management Hong Kong. Uh, Sub-manager is our Singapore uh, office, uh, Philip Capital Management Singapore. Uh, uh, custodian is HSBC, Register also HSBC. Uh, the ongoing charges over a year will be, uh, be, will be less than 1.5% and uh, estimated annual tracking difference uh, will be around 2%. Okay, the underlying index, as I mentioned uh, earlier, is uh, Selective Newly, Hong Kong Newly Listed Equities Index. Base currency and trading currencies are both Hong Kong dollar. There will be no distribution, inter no dividend distribution. Uh, uh, and the financial year end is 31st December. Okay, uh, for more details, you can go to our uh, company website, philipfunds.com.hk. Uh, to view uh, more details. Okay, so the Hong Kong IPO market, uh, Hong Kong has always been the uh, preferred uh, or the number one IPO venue globally. In the past 12 years, seven out of the past 12 years, Hong Kong ranked number one in terms of uh, uh, fund uh, raised uh, through uh, IPO listings. Last year, to, uh, uh, the year before last, 2021, there were 110 IPOs in Hong Kong, uh, raising a total of 356 billion Hong Kong dollars uh, in 2021. Uh, there are seven deals, the so-called mega uh, IPOs, that uh, raised uh, 95, nearly uh, 100 billion Hong Kong dollars. Uh, accounting for 27% of the, percent of the market. And then uh, there are 30 deals uh, that had raised a total of 70 billion, uh, accounting for 20% of the market. Okay, uh, in 2021, uh, you can see that in the, on the right-hand side, TMT accounts for 38% uh, of the uh, companies uh, listed. So uh, a lot of the I new IPOs are from TMT uh, sector. And then also healthcare life sciences account for 23% of the uh, IPO and industrials account just for 12%. Uh, so in 2021, we 
uh, uh, witness that there are more TMT companies and healthcare life sciences uh, uh, being listed uh, in, uh, on the Hong Kong market. In 2022, uh, the first half was very weak. Huh? Uh, Hong Kong only crawled its way back to third place among the world's largest fundraising destinations for 2022 in the second half. Uh, so Hong Kong ranked the third last year, uh, just behind Shanghai and Sunshine. Uh, NASDAQ and the NYSE, New York Stock Exchange, both dropped out of the top 10 last year. Companies raised a combined 12.69 billion US dollars in Hong Kong in 2022 through 75 IPOs. So compared to 2021, 110 uh, in terms of uh, total number of uh, listings, uh, uh, there was a, a quite a, a big drop. And in terms of uh, fundraise, uh, the, it was 70.5% less than the 43 billion US dollar raised in 2021. Uh, but we saw a revival uh, in, in fundraising activity in the second half last year. Uh, in the three months to December, that's the fourth quarter, there were 28 IPOs raising a total of 3.78 billion US dollar. After 24 IPOs in the, in the third quarter, raising a total of 6.47 billion uh, in the third quarter. It was almost five times as much as the 2.37 billion US dollar raised during the first six month period. So uh, last year is characterized by a weak first half and a rather robust second half. Okay, so uh, this year, uh, uh, analysts are more upbeat about the Hong Kong IPO market. Both PwC and Deloitte uh, believe Hong Kong can remain in the top three international IPO markets in 2023, backed by various positive factors and developments, including a slowdown in US interest rate hike and reopening of the Hong Kong and mainland boundary. Um, Deloitte expects Hong Kong to see 110 new listings this year, raising a total of about 230 billion Hong Kong dollar. And there are also a slew of regulatory, regulatory reforms uh, that will set uh, to be implemented soon uh, that will benefit Hong Kong's IPO market in 2023. These include changes that allow a broader range of pre-revenue technology companies to list, uh, and also the introduction of yuan-denominated yuan stock trading and the inclusion of Hong Kong listed overseas companies in the southbound leg of the stock connect mechanism. So this will also benefit Hong Kong EX as uh, we expect more inflow of uh, base rate, uh, the, the, uh, fun, more fund flow from China, uh, uh, southbound, uh, fund flow from China uh, into Hong Kong. Uh, they will benefit uh, Hong Kong EX. Okay. Uh, so uh, the last part of my presentation today will do a quick uh, uh, analysis of those companies that have DLC issue in Singapore. And those are the more uh, popular our most actively traded uh, Hong Kong stocks. Alibaba, uh, we uh, noticed that the outlook is uh, improving. There's an improving outlook. Uh, in the second fiscal quarter, in the September 30, 2022, revenue was 207.55 billion yuan, uh, an increase of 3% year on year. Uh, worth to take note is income from operations was up 68% to 25.13 billion yuan, primarily attributable to an increase in adjusted EBITDA, uh, as well as a decrease in share-based compensation expense. Adjusted EBITDA, a non-JAP uh, measurement, increased 29% to 36.16 billion in the uh, second fiscal quarter ended 30, uh, September 30. 
Uh, revenue of its once fast-growing cloud business still uh, quite weak because of competition from telco, uh, Chinese tel telecom operators such as China Mobile and China Telecom. Uh, its cloud business revenue from its cloud business only grew 4% to 20.75 billion yuan. But uh, revenue from Cai Niao uh, its logistic uh, segment uh, before intersegment elimination grew 26% to 18.28 uh, billion yuan, of which 73% was generated from external customers. Because China was established to serve uh, its e-commerce uh, platforms such as uh, Tmall and Taobao. But increasingly, China is getting uh, more external customers. So, uh, you can see here, 73% uh, of the revenue came from external customers. And sentiment toward Alibaba got a boost recently uh, from a top central bank official that's the chairman of the, uh, the Banking and Insurance Committee Commission, uh, Guo Shuqing, uh, stated that the clampdown on the internet sector uh, was drawing to a close. And also another uh, positive uh, impetus is Jack Ma uh, finally relinquished his control right, controlling rights of end. Okay, so this helped sentiment uh, toward Alibaba improve a lot, and his share price has uh, uh, outperformed uh, the, the the market recently, and the listing risk that had been. Uh, dampening the share price uh, for most of the time last year, uh, forced that the risks are lower. As US regulators said, they have secured complete access to review audit papers of companies based in China and Hong Kong. Uh, so now that the listing risk uh, is lower. However, uh, there's still uh, the uh, uh, disposal uh, the potential disposal by SoftBank uh, may uh, uh, add pressure to the share price because SoftBank, which owns about 24% of Alibaba, has, has uh, made clear that they are in the process of slashing its stake to about 15%. Okay. Um, its share price has risen uh, back to about one above 100 Hong Kong dollars. Uh, our near-term resistance target, near-term target for Alibaba is 122 Hong Kong dollars. Above that, the next resistance level is expected to be around 135 Hong Kong dollars. Whereas the near-term support is expected uh, at around 98 Hong Kong dollars and the next support below 98 dollars will be 89 uh, Hong Kong dollars. Okay. Tencent uh, is also, the outlook is also brightening as uh, game, online games, once described as spiritual opium, uh, now no more, uh, no more spiritual opium. Uh, let's look at the uh, financial results first. Total revenue for the first nine months of 2022 uh, declined slightly, 1.5% uh, year on year to 409.5 billion yuan, uh, and net profit dropped 36.9% to 81.9 billion. It's because of the slowdown uh, in the uh, um, um, uh, macro economy uh, that uh, uh, hit its online game, gaming and uh, advertising, online advertising business. As growth decelerated Tencent last year, uh, focus on improving efficiency through downsizing uh, with multiple rounds of layoffs. Actually, uh, the internet uh, giants in China uh, were reported to be uh, very actively lay laying off staff downsizing last year to, uh, in to maintain uh, their profitability. And uh, besides uh, laying off staff, Tencent also uh, shut down non-performing businesses and exit uh, some investment in the face of slowing sales. For instance, it has 
announced to dispose of his uh, investment in Jingdong uh, by uh, distributing the physical shares of Jingdong to its shareholders. And in November last year, it also announced that it will uh, 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 dispose of its uh, holding in Meituan uh, by uh, distributing the physical shares to, uh, of Meituan to its shareholders. Okay, uh, we expect a rebound in 2023 as China's macroeconomic environment stabilizes, uh, which will boost its advertising and gaming business. And China, Chinese regulators recently, uh, uh, we see more approval of new game licenses uh, that may signal that Beijing was easing its crackdown on the gaming industry. Uh, once that, that's why we 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 describe. Uh, I mean, we have this uh, uh, spirit, spiritual opium no more because once uh, online games are described as spiritual opium, uh, causing uh, 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 juvenile, uh, uh, young, young people to, uh, to be addicted to. But now uh, the Chinese regulators is taking a less hostile uh, stance against the gaming industry. Uh, yet Tencent stresses that it would take advantage of every license it has obtained and will focus on the quality of games. Uh, there's also uh, the pressure uh, from uh, potential disposal by its major shareholder, Nespers, which owns 29% of Tencent through process, has said it would gradually sell Tencent shares to fund repurchases of its own stock. Its stake in Tencent is currently reduced to 26.9%. Okay. Uh, Tencent also has a strong uh, rebound uh, that's, uh, since last November. Uh, its share price has doubled uh, from 180 to current 360. Uh, we expect near-term resistance around 382. And on above that, the next resistance level uh, will be 395 uh, Hong Kong dollars. Near-term support is expected at around 330, and the next support below 330 is 310. Okay. Uh, May 10, uh, the, pros the uh, near-term prospect is still optimistic, but it's also facing significant risk. Uh, including competitive risk as well as political risk. Uh, let's look at the uh, financial results, uh, the latest financial results. Revenues increased by 28.2% year on year to 62.6 billion yuan in the third quarter of 2022, and profit was 1.2 billion yuan uh, compared to a loss of 10 billion yuan for the same period of 2021. Its core local commerce segment achieved revenue growth of 24.6%, despite negative impact from the uh, COVID pandemic. And operating profit increased by 124.6% to 9.3 billion yuan. Operating margin also improved to 20.1%. Uh, revenue from the new initiative segment, including Meituan, Select, Meituan Youshuan and Meituan Grocery, Meituan Mai Cai, uh, increased by 39.7% to 16.3 billion yuan, mainly driven by the growth attributable to the goods retail businesses. However, uh, the new initiative segment is still loss making, uh, but operating loss continuously narrowed to 6.8 billion yuan. Uh, to look for uh, faster growth, Meituan has been reported that it, had, it, it plans to expand into Hong Kong and other international markets uh, as domestic growth slows and uh, com competition getting more intense. Recent pandemics resurgence nationwide uh, does, however, does bring short-term headwind to Meituan in particular, 
its truffle business, OTA business, may be affected by the uh, pandemic resurgence. And uh, as I mentioned just now, uh, in no November last year, Tencent said it would divest 15.5% of its 17% stake that is worth $20.3 billion uh, in May 1 through a dividend distribution to shareholders. And Nespers, being the uh, major shareholder of Tencent, is, uh, has uh, uh, made clear that they will offload the May 1 shares uh, it, once it received from Ten cents. So there would be uh, selling pressure on May 10. And you can see that compared to the share price, to, uh, the share performance of Alibaba and Tencent, May 10 actually uh, lags behind uh, recently. Uh, we expect near term resistance around $210. The next resistance would be uh, around $225. Uh, near term support is expected around 170 Hong Kong dollars, and next support below 170 will be 160. Okay, so May 10, we are, we are more upbeat, uh, uh, admittedly, we're more upbeat on uh, Alibaba and Tencent. Uh, May 10, uh, uh, as I mentioned just now, because of the uh, the uh, rise in, in infection cases in the short term, as well as the potential disposal uh, by Nespa uh, may pressurize its share price in the in the short term. Okay, ATM. Now we come to X, uh, Xiaomi. Uh, the headwinds remain strong. Uh, it's still facing strong headwinds. Uh, revenue declined 11.8% year on year to 213.99 billion yuan in the first nine months of 2022. Loss was 639 million yuan compared to a net profit of 16.84 billion yuan uh, for the same period in 2021 mainly hurt by decline in demand for smartphones in China, Europe, and other markets. Uh, its profit margin also comes under pressure. Gross profit margin decreased from 18.3% in the third quarter of 2021 to 16.6% in the third quarter of 2022. Margins will remain under pressure with premiumization uh, due to aggressive expansion of offline stores they are opening more offline store to sell their uh, handphones, and this will uh, increase their uh, capital expenditure uh, as well as the cost, uh, operating costs, uh, and also the investment in uh, the R and D and investment in electric vehicles uh, will also uh, add pressure to their uh, profit margin. Uh, for 2023, we are still downbeat about China's smartphone industry. Uh, it's expected to remain under pressure amid global supply chain disruption and weak consumer spending uh, at, uh, in China. Uh, political risk, uh, as India has become uh, the largest uh, handphone market to Xiaomi outside China, but India is becoming uh, more hostile to Chinese smartphone makers, uh, while Xiaomi accounts for about 21% of India's mobile phone market, okay? So Xiaomi, uh, we, uh, we have reservation about Xiaomi. Its share price also underperformed A and T, la, Alibaba and Tencent. It's still, uh, uh, it's, it's not, still not, uh, rise above the 250-day moving average, which is the, the red line. Uh, its key is, it, 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 it will be uh, whether it's able to rise above uh, this 250-day uh, moving average will be key to its uh, future uh, price movement. Uh, the 250-day moving average now lies at $12.30. Uh, if it manages to rise above the 250-day moving average, the next resistance level is expected around 13.2 Hong Kong dollars. And above that, 
the next resistance level uh, is 14.5 Hong Kong dollars. As for support, near-term support is expected around 11.10 Hong Kong dollars and next support uh, uh, lower is 10.2 Hong Kong dollars. Okay, uh, now let's move to the uh, car sector. Uh, BYD again uh, beat Tesla in 2022 electric vehicle sales. Uh, its deliveries in 2022 rose to 1.86 million units, beating Tesla uh, in 2022 and also exceeding its own sales target of 1.5 million uh, set for 2022. And its market share in the Chinese EV market reached 28.6%. That means um, uh, in, uh, uh, among 10 e electric vehicles sold in China, uh, almost three are from BYD. In the first three quarter of 2022, the group reported a revenue of 267 billion yuan, representing a year-on-year -year increase of 84.4%. Profit attributable to shareholders of the parent company increased by 281% to 8.36 billion uh, yuan. Okay. Uh, recently, there were reports that it has set a sales target of 4 million vehicles in 2023. Wow, that would be more than double uh, the 1.86 million units sold in 2022. Uh, very aggressive uh, uh, number, but uh, this is just uh, uh, rumor. Uh, BYD uh, respond to the report saying that due to the continuing pandemic, there are many uncertainties regarding consumer demand and supply chain system. So it's difficult for the company to set a precise sales target for this year. Okay, uh, so this is uh, they are they are they, they themselves are not feeling not. Uh, uh, certain about uh, the outlook in 2023. And on top of that, but, uh, Warren Buffett uh, continues to trim uh, his stake in BYD. The latest disposal was last Tuesday. And uh, as uh, uh, January 3rd, uh, reducing his stake in BYD to 13.97%. So we expect, uh, despite the uh, strong fundamentals uh, 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 of the company, uh, this disposal, potential disposal by Warren Buffett will continue to pressurize the share price. You can see that the share price uh, remain under pressure. Uh, technical, uh, technically, it is... Uh, it fails to breach the resistance of the 100-day moving average, not to mention 250-day moving average is even much higher. Uh, the red line is a 250-day moving average. The black line is the 100-day moving average, which it uh, fails to uh, penetrate. Uh, Near-term resistance uh, is expected around 210 Hong Kong dollars. Uh, above that, the next resistance level is 225 Hong Kong dollars. Uh, Near-term support is uh, 198 Hong Kong dollars, and the next support will be 189. Okay, let's look at another car maker, Geely Auto. Uh, its profitability uh, is under pressure. In the first 11, 11 months of 2022, Geely Auto sold a total of one 0.286 million vehicles, representing an increase of 10% year over year and accounting for 78% of its 2022 uh, sales target. Uh, that is 1.65 million units. Actually, Chile uh, announced the December uh, sales data today. Uh, so for the whole year, of 2022, it sold a total of 1.4 million uh, vehicles, still short of its uh, 1.65 million uh, uh, target. Okay, um, among the cars sold, a total of 308,681 new energy vehicles were sold. Were uh, were uh, were new energy vehicles. 
including 224,351 electric vehicles and 84,330 hybrids, accounting for 24% of its total vehicle sales. And total revenue increased by 29% to 58.2 billion uh, yuan in the first half of 2022. Uh, but gross margin ratio was down by 2.6 percentage points to 14.6%, negatively affected by higher raw material costs and the increase in the proportion of new energy uh, vehicles. As a result, the group's profit attributable to the equity holders was down 35% uh, year on year to 1.55 billion yuan. So quite disappointing. Uh, you look at uh, both numbers, total revenue increased by 29%, yet uh, net profit dropped uh, 35%. Okay? Uh, profitability will remain under pressure, resulting from higher investment in product development and operating expenses, including those relating to new energy vehicles and its startup premium uh, electric vehicle business seeker as well as the increased debt to support such investments and associated expenses. So Chile, uh, we are uh, not uh, very upbeat about uh, its outlook. Uh, its share price is also uh, 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 fails to penetrate the 100-day moving average, the black line uh, seen in the chart. Near-term resistance is expected around $12.50 Hong Kong, uh, $12.5 Hong Kong dollars. And above that, the next resistance level is 13.5. Near-term support is 11. Next support uh, will be 10 Hong Kong dollars. Okay. Um, now let's look at the uh, gaming stocks. Uh, Galaxy Entertainment, uh, it will stand to benefit from China's reopening. Uh, besides that, it was also awarded by the Macau government a 10-year license that runs from January 1st, 2023 to December 31st, 2023. It has been issued 1,000 gaming tables and 1,700 electronic gaming machines under the new concession. Uh, its previous table allocation under the table cap was 10,079 tables. So, uh, the short change is only 79 tables, not a, not a significant uh, drop. Uh, the, so it's seen, still, still seen uh, as positive uh, to the company. Uh, it has pledged to the government uh, when it uh, was granted the new license that it will, it will spend or invest a total of 28.4 uh, billion Macau Petacast, uh, uh, equivalent to 3.5 billion US dollar, of which 96.8% uh, will go to non-gaming and exploring foreign customer markets. Uh, uh, as part of its efforts to explore overseas customer markets, Galaxy Entertainment said it would carry out new promotion plans targeting specific overseas markets. Such plans include setting up overseas offices in Singapore, Thailand, and South Korea, and launching an array of marketing schemes, such as travel packages in Japan, Indonesia, Malaysia, China, uh, India, the Philippines, and Vietnam. Uh, the company is also very cash rich. As of 30 June 2022, Cash and liquid investment were $29 billion, and uh, it has only a very uh, a small amount of debt. So it has a net cash of more than $20 billion Hong Kong dollars. Okay. Uh, its share price uh, was stuck in a, a, a sideways pattern last year between $34 Hong Kong dollars and $49 which it finally managed to break above this, uh, uh, this rectang re rectangular pattern uh, in uh, mid-December. Now it's trading about 49 Hong Kong dollars. So uh, the near-term resistance is around 55, 
Next resistance is 60 Hong Kong dollars. Near term support is 50 Hong Kong dollars and next support is 47.50. Okay. Uh, last stock to cover is Wuxi Biologics. Uh, the first half result are still very uh, strong, uh, very solid and stellar. The group's revenue for the six months ended June 30 to 022 increased by 63.5% year on year to 7.2 billion, together with a 60.3% year on year growth in adjusted net profit attributable to the owners of the company to 2.835 billion yuan. The total number of integrated projects increased by 30.9% from 408 as at the same time last year to 534 as at June 30, uh, 2022, including close to 500 non-COVID integrated projects. Um, the group's total backlog, including the service backlog and upcoming potential milestone fees backlog, increased from 12.465 billion US dollar as of June 30, 2021 to 18.467 billion US dollar as of June 30, 2022. Another uh, positive news is the U.S. Commerce Department had removed Wuxi Biologics uh, from its unverified list that forces U.S. suppliers to perform greater due diligence before shipping to them. Uh, but <clears throat> there is still a potential uh, negative factor that is the U.S. Uh, efforts to boost their own biotech industry and avoid risk posed by foreign adversary, namely uh, China. Uh, this may uh, affect Wuxi Biologics in the, long, in the longer term as revenue derived from North America accounted for 54.1% uh, of its total revenue in the first half of 2022. Okay, uh, so uh, the share price was uh, the share price underperformed uh, late last year because of uh, the U.S. Uh, restriction, uh, the uh, uh, putting uh, on the uh, unverified list. Uh, but lately, because this one uh, uh, is it, clear, uh, so is share price uh, doing some uh, catch up. Uh, and we expect near-term resistance around 70 Hong, 72 Hong Kong dollars. Next resistance is 80. Near-term support uh, will be 61 Hong Kong dollars. And the next support, uh, lower support, is $56.50. Okay, so this end my presentation today. Uh, I'll uh, answer some uh, question being raised from the audience. Um, can share your views on China financial stocks, mainly the big four banks and insurance stock like Ping An. Is it a good time now to buy or stay invested going forward? Okay, uh, we are a bit on, uh, we, we have a, a positive view uh, on banking stock, China bank, Chinese banking stocks and insurance stocks uh, because uh, of the improvement uh, or the the debt crisis have been uh, of the property uh, developers have been uh, resolved, so it will lead to uh, better uh, improving property sales and also uh, uh, default issues, uh, default risk now lower. Uh, that will be also positive to uh, the banks. Okay, so uh, China will not uh, rush to. Uh, uh, lower interest rate to stimulate its economy. It still has many other tools to uh, simulate, simulate uh, the economy. So uh, it will not uh, adversely affect the, uh, the interest spread uh, of uh, the banks. Okay? Insurance company, as in particular Ping An, is more uh, exposed to the property uh, sector sector because of his investment in uh, property, some property companies that have uh, got into trouble, uh, financial trouble. Now as the default risk lesson, uh, Ping An also saw, saw its uh, strong uh, rebound, uh, revaluation 
uh, that uh, leads to a strong rebound in the share price. Uh, Ping An Carney is a bit high, uh, the share price. Uh, uh, we recommend uh, wait for a, a correction, uh, I mean, wait for a lower price to uh, buy Ping An. Um, let me get the, the, the share price. But uh, the four uh, state-owned banks, I think the valuation is still uh, attractive uh, uh, at this price level. Uh, so uh, investors can actually go in uh, at the current level. Let's look at Ping An first. Uh, now it's trading at 57.80. Uh, yesterday it uh, rose as high as 59 close to $60. So there's a uh, resistance, uh, clear, uh, stiff resistance around $60. Uh, so uh, we recommend to go in around 55 uh, Hong Kong dollars. And then to play safe, you can uh, set a stop loss uh, at uh, 50, 10% uh, stop loss. Um, as for the other state-owned banks, uh, I think now they are still uh, quite cheap. Uh, ICBC is trading uh, below four times uh, historical PE, and the yield is yielding 8.6% dividend yield. Okay, so uh, four, now it's trading at 4.15. Uh, if there's a correction, uh, uh, the share price corrects to uh, close to four dollars. It will be a good uh, uh, entry point. Uh, see, China Construction Bank now is trading at also three times historical PE and uh, yielding eight point nine percent dividend yield. Um, now it's trading uh, at close to five Hong Kong dollars. Uh, a good entry point would be uh, 480 to 485. Okay, 480 to 485. Uh, ABC, Agricultural Bank of China, uh, is trading at um, 3.5 times historical PE and yielding more than 9%. It's even, in terms of dividend yield, I think it's the, uh, the highest uh, among the four uh, state-owned banks, okay? Uh, a good entry price would be 270, 270, where the 250-day mo uh, moving average lies, okay? Uh, last one, uh, Bank of China. Bank of China uh, is trading at 3.4 times historical PE and yielding 9.3%. So both uh, Agricultural Bank of China and Bank of China are giving more than 9% uh, dividend yield. Okay. Uh, now it's, tra it's trading at 290. Uh, I think uh, one can wait. Uh, for two n two eighty as the entry uh, entry pointer. Okay. Uh, what is your take on ATM stocks? I think I just now uh, focus uh, already focus on Alibaba, Tencent, and Meituan. Uh, we are more uh, bullish on Alibaba and Tencent uh, and less upbeat uh, on Meituan. Okay. Uh, Ping An, uh, just now already talked about Ping An. Uh, what's your view that countries are moving the supply chain out of China, causing massive unemployment? Yes, that's, uh, that's that. Uh, now the uh, overall unemployment rate is 5.5%, uh, but a uh, worrying uh, phenomenon is those, uh, the um, unemployment rate among the the uh, age 20 to 30 population is as high as 17%. Uh, so uh, if this, if 
the economy uh, continues to slow down, it will become a social problem for China. I mean, this uh, uh, high unemployment. Uh, it will also affect uh, future consumer spending as consumer spending accounts for uh, two thirds of uh, economic uh, growth. Uh, uh, so to, to resolve the issue uh, in the short term, you can see China uh, is encouraging those young people uh, who cannot find a job to continue uh, their studies, to further their studies. So this will benefit uh, some uh, education uh, service providers, especially those providing tertiary uh, education and uh, 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 professional uh, education, uh, professional training. Okay, so I don't see any uh, solution uh, to the un unless the economy, uh, unless the economy e economic growth. Uh, accelerates to uh, uh, create more jobs for uh, the young generation. Otherwise, uh, the short-term uh, uh, fixing, the short-term fix is to ask those uh, young people to further their studies, okay? Uh, BYD and Geely, just now already. Uh, now, uh, BYD, the its fundamentals are good, yet, uh, because of competition in the uh, car industry in China. You heard about Tesla uh, cutting prices in China uh, to lure buyers. So this will uh, uh, add pressure to other car makers as well. But BYD, because of its uh, 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 market leading position, it stands uh, better in a better position to, I mean, to uh, to uh, lower price, its its pressure will be less uh, than other, especially the uh, so-called new forces, uh, uh, Li Otto, Neo, and Xiaopeng. Uh, they will be under bigger pressure uh, to uh, cut prices to face uh, competition. Uh, and then this the supply chain disruption as well as the workforce disruption. Uh, will also cause uh, uh, fluctuations in their production and sales. So car sector uh, is one of the sectors that we recommend to avoid in the short term. Okay. Uh, uh, this is a Singapore listed uh, ETF. I'm not in the position to uh, give comments uh, on OCBC line tech ETF. Uh, you may re, uh, refer to your uh, uh, remisiers uh, or, or dealers in uh, uh, Philip Singapore, Philip Capital Singapore, or you can uh, contact our research in Singapore if they can offer views on uh, the, the ETF. Okay. Eric mentioned that it seems like for the big tech firms like Tencent and Alibaba and Major, and there are and will be a lot of selling pressure for substantial shareholders looking to reduce the stick for various reasons. Uh, Bucket Share Hathaway has been actively reducing stick in BYD as well. Is this a cause for concern if so many long-term investors are looking to sell? Uh, because they enter at a very uh, low price. So I think also uh, they have their own uh, financial problems. Uh, for instance, NASPA uh, need to prop up their share price by doing uh, share repurchase. So it needs money. Uh, SoftBank as well, uh, because of uh, the loss uh, in, uh, made by the, the company itself. So uh, their disposal may not really uh, mean that they are, they are uh, downbeat on the on the on those companies, uh, they are very or they are very uh, negative about the uh, the prospect of those companies because they 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 themselves have uh, financial needs to meet. Uh, uh, but uh, admittedly, the growth uh, rate have uh, uh, stalled for these uh, internet companies. They are no longer. I mean, they are entering a uh, another life cycle whereby uh, the growth rate has. Uh, slow down uh, substantially. 
So they need to look for uh, new initiatives. And also the focus will be, as I mentioned just now, uh, uh, will be on uh, streamlining, uh, raising pro productivity, uh, profitability by uh, uh, downsizing. Uh, uh, okay, so um, I think it's not really too worrying. It will be short term, uh, the, the potential disposal will uh, exert pressure on the share price. But whether we will read it as a very negative uh, in, interpretation, uh, uh, I, I, I don't think so for the time being, okay? Hmm. Many Cantonese videos on uh, the internet for Hong Kong market, no English videos on the internet for Hong Kong market, because 98, 99% of uh, Hong Kong uh, community speaks Cantonese, uh, not even uh, Mandarin. Uh, so uh, a lot of the videos uh, on YouTube and Facebook uh, about the Hong Kong stock market, they are uh, in uh, English. But we are producing um, uh, Mandarin. If you can understand Mandarin better than Cantonese, uh, uh, Philip Hong Kong is producing a weekly uh, video in Mandarin, uh, which we uh, will broadcast on YouTube, as well as uh, we'll send to uh, Philip Singapore for them to uh, forward to uh, their, their clients. So uh, English one, uh, we, we, are, we are studying whether uh, there's a uh, me enough demand, then we'll uh, try to produce English videos as well. Uh, BYD New Lee, I think I've talked enough about uh, those EV companies. Uh, you mentioned, let me see. Okay. Wow, uh, it's encouraging to see there's so many questions. Huh? Uh, okay, uh, what is your view on BYD? BYD have uh, uh, talked a lot about BYD. Uh, Hong Kong EX, uh, I think this year, because we expect a better IPO market and also the uh, rally to continue uh, in 2023 after the uh, sell off last year, after the drop last year. So it will benefit Hong Kong EX. Uh, we we uh, think there's high chance for share price to rise uh, about $400 to see, I mean, uh, about $400 again uh, this year, okay? Uh, can you share your view about Hai Di Lao and Super High? Uh, Hai Di Lao, its share price has actually uh, rebounded quite a lot uh, based on the uh, expectation of uh, reopening in uh, China. Uh, but uh, the... Uh, Growth momentum is not sure because at the uh, last year, you remember uh, it uh, because of the uh, poor performance of some of his uh, branches, uh, some of his restaurants, it has uh, started this so-called woodpecker program uh, by uh, closing uh, those uh, non-performing restaurants. So after that, uh, now they are, uh, uh, opening more new branches again. Whether it's too uh, rushed to open more new branches, whether uh, the market is, is ready, not sure. Uh, just worry that uh, a new expansion phase may lead to uh, higher, uh, higher risk. Uh, but the company has, been, has spun off its international uh, outfit lately in Hong Kong. Uh, so that will uh, help uh, uh, them to focus on 
the home market uh, and improve the profitability uh, in, uh, in the home market. Okay. Can you give your view on both JD.com and JD Logistics? Okay. Uh, JD.com uh, will also benefit from uh, the positive is, uh, as I mentioned just now, uh, the uh, clampdown on platform companies have ended. So uh, uh, in the past, JD.com as a platform company is also uh, victimized, being victimized because of the clampdown uh, by the clampdown of uh, uh, platform companies. But of course, the pressure, uh, its pressure uh, is not as uh, much as that faced by Alibaba. La. JD is, uh, fa faces faced a less uh, uh, pressure than Alibaba. Now this clampdown has ended, so it will uh, also benefit uh, JD.com. But uh, the e-commerce part, uh, because of the slowdown in US e uh, in the China economy, uh, whether this reopening, how how long it would take. Uh, for e-commerce to regain uh, its uh, uh, growth momentum remains to be seen. No? Uh, so one uncertainty has been removed, that is the clampdown on platform company. But the other uncertainty still clouding the outlook is uh, consumer spending, uh, how it will fare in, the, uh, in 2023. But as I mentioned in my presentation, uh, pent up demand being unleashed may uh, finally lead to a rebound in consumer spending in China this year. They will also benefit e-commerce operators such as JD and uh, uh, Alibaba. As for JD Logistics, uh, I think uh, being a service provider to JD, uh, the profit margin will, uh, will be uh, under pressure. Uh, JD would not uh, allow JD Logistics to, uh, uh, I mean, to uh, uh, enjoy a very high profit margin uh, from its own business. So uh, as for external clients, external customers, uh, the competition in the uh, logistic industry in China is quite intense. You have a lot of uh, quality. Uh, uh, sweet delivery as well as uh, logistic companies competing uh, in China. So uh, personally, I'm more upbeat on JD.com and less upbeat on JD Logistic. Among the three JD companies, I would rank it. I mean, the uh, the third place. Actually, I I prefer JD Health uh, to JD Logistic. Okay, uh, let's. Uh, um, let's take three more questions that we will end because uh, the, of the time constraint. Uh, we'll, uh, I will uh, uh, answer three more questions. Okay, how oh, high biological JD Health? JD Health, just now I mentioned, uh, 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 we like JD Health because uh, China, there is this issue of high uh, drug prices uh, in the past. High, the high drug prices are, in a sense, uh, uh, caused by uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the system itself, because a lot of the, of the hospitals in China are, uh, are loss making. So they have to uh, make up for the loss by selling uh, uh, drug uh, pharma uh, products at a higher price uh, to uh, compensate uh, the, uh, the, the loss. Uh, and this would not be in the favor of uh, uh, patients. Uh, so now the one of the two uh, solutions taken adopted by uh, the Chinese government is uh, by uh, procurement uh, in a big amount. Uh, will help lower uh, drug, uh, the, uh, the price of uh, ph uh, pharma drugs. And the other uh, policy initiative adopted by the Chinese government is to encourage more uh, patients to uh, buy prescri 
prescriptive drugs online so they can compare the prices are more transparent online uh, and uh, uh, they can compare and uh, look for the cheapest uh, products. So this will help lower uh, 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 drug prices in China. So, uh, so uh, I think uh, because of the aging population and also a lot of uh, 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 long-term uh, kind of uh, uh, diseases that needs to uh, to uh, take medicine for uh, say years. Uh, so that will people will will see more uh, people buying drugs online. They will benefit JD Health as well as Ali Ali Health. Okay. Mm. Beijing Jingneng Clean Energy. Uh, yes, we are still uh, uh, we still like this company because of uh, the uh, Shuang Tan, uh, the, uh, the the uh, government initiative to uh, reduce carbon uh, emission. Wu Jingneng. Uh, its share price also outperformed the market a very strong uh, rally since uh, November last year from $1.50 now trading at about $2. Yet it's trading at uh, only less than six times historical PE and yielding uh, four, more than 4% dividend yield. So, looks cheap. Uh, although the dividend yield is not as high as uh, that of the uh, banking stocks, yet uh, there's growth, uh, 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 faster growth uh, prospect. Okay. Um, AIA uh, short term will depend on the reopening of China, uh, whether they will see an increase in uh, policy, uh, new policies uh, sold in Hong Kong to Chinese uh, residents. Because in the past, uh, uh, the major growth uh, impetus came from uh, Chinese residents going to Hong Kong uh, to uh, buy insurance policies. Uh, there's one, uh, besides that, AIA is also well uh, diversify in uh, the in Southeast Asia, in Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, uh, as well as India. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, that is uh, potential. I mix up uh, potential, but uh, it also have a presence in uh, some Southeast Asian uh, countries uh, that is uh, more diversified than the Chinese uh, insurers. Okay. Uh, its share price also uh, performed well uh, lately. Uh, it's uh, in a sense outperforming the uh, the broad market, uh, but there is resistance around ninety two dollars, and uh, support is expected around eighty three. Uh, so we expect a trading range between eighty three and ninety three la. Okay. Okay, so uh, that ends my presentation uh, today, and uh, really a big uh, uh, many thanks to uh, all of you being so actively uh, raising questions. I regret that I won't, uh, I, we don't have enough time to uh, answer all the questions, but uh, we'll try to uh, reply by email if if, if it's possible. Uh, we'll. Uh, coordinate with our Singapore colleague uh, on this. Thanks.